Hi everyone, today I'm here to talk about controlling chemical reactivity with molecular properties. We know that chemistry is the language of matter transformation and we as chemists care about this process at the molecular and the reaction levels. As any other language, chemistry has its own limitation of semantics and different approaches can be taken to interpret the chemical phenomena. For example, organic chemists have a qualitative point of view on these processes and they bring conceptualization to every step in a chemical reaction. Their strategy is to use chemical intuition to translate and explain data. And they use the pictorial representation of reaction mechanisms to understand electronic effects. In other hand, we have quantum chemists with a quantitative point of view using mathematics and physical transcriptions to understand and study chemical structures. We use the Schrodinger equation as our oracle to extract information and knowledge. With this in mind, you might ask, how do we study qualitative concepts from organic chemistry in terms of quantum uh, mechanics phenomena. We all should agree that molecules are groups of atoms with physical properties connected by quantum chemical interactions. And those interactions can be stabilized by exterior electronic effects. It consists on electronic effects maximized by the orbital overlap in a favored conformational arrangement. To talk about overlap, we need to recall that molecular orbitals are linear combinations of atomic orbitals, which can be represented as Gaussian functions. And the overlap is, therefore, the integral between the two atomic orbitals that are being combined in the molecular space. Representing this in a diagram, um, we often face the same situation. The interaction between a field orbital and an empty anti-bonding orbital. And we can have different arrangements of this overlap. Um, considering that larger delta E leads us to a weaker overlap between the orbitals. This can happen in a context, context of intermolecular interactions and intermolecular interactions. It can be studied by several different computational methods. Focusing on the context of exterior electronic effects, we certainly observe that conformational changes impact orbital overlap and chemical reactivity. Let us take the simple example of a cis diene. If we rotate the sigma bond uh, we, to get the trans isomer, we have a stabilization of 2.7 kilocopper mole. Why the trans structure is more favored in this case? This happens because of the antiperipolar arrangement of the best donor and best acceptor. We can easily see that in my NBO calculation. If we look at the highest occupied NBO, the bonding orbital of the carbon 4 is a donor of the anti -bond, for the antibonding orbital in the carbon 2. Another effect that can be hysterically electronically important not just in the previous case but in all in chemistry in general uh, is the hybridization we know the most famous states of hybridization in carbon atoms but we need to remember that it can happen when, with other atoms in any degree of orbital mixing uh, because it basically consists on mixing atomic orbitals to get stabilization. This, but this comes with a cost. Um, 
I mean an energy cost of electronically electronic promotion. Let us take a look at the classic example of carbon in a methane molecule. We have a promotion of an electron in the 2s orbital to the 2p orbital. This increases the energy of the system, but immediately we have greater stabilization when forming CH bonds in the methane molecule. And hybridization is a concept that interplays with other different chemical properties, like electronegativity. And in this case, we have stated the Vance rule. It says that the P character is directed towards the most electronegative atoms. To illustrate this, we will compare ammonia and hydrogen trifluoride. We know that uh, fluorines are more electronegative than hydrogens, and as we substitute hydrogens by fluorines, we can note an increment in the bond length of the nitrogen bonds because the S character decreases. But we also see the bond angle between the nitrogen and the adjacent atoms uh, decreases. And this is automatically derived from Band's rule and stated in this equation called Coulson's theorem. If we still go that, in this case, uh, in these systems to study the umbrella effect or nitrogen inversion if you prefer we see that the barrier for this to happen with the nitrogen fluoride is too much larger than the one required for ammonia this is because uh, of a re hybridization that happens to form sp2 planar transition state sp2 configuration has a lower p character which is not stabilized by fluorine as is stated by Bent's rule but let me put a disclaimer here uh, there's another effect responsible for this inversion and this is a quantum if we take a look at the equation describing the transmittance, the transmittance in this effect, we can easily see that it depends on the mass of the particle. And obviously, hydrogen is lighter than fluorine. And two nulls easily, allowing the umbrella effect to happen in ammonia, but not in, in the nitrogen free fluoride. Another interesting effect that plays with hybridization is conjugation. Since these two effects can stabilize a chemical system, they compete. And let us analyze carefully the, the case of the allylic system. If we rotate the sigma bond, we will have two different barriers in case we are talking about a carbonium or a carbocation. It is easier to rotate in the malic anion. And why does it does it happen? If we consider the geometry of the carbonium dictated by the hybridization of the carbon, we have a pyramidal structure. But in this case, the delocalized allylic anion sacrificed the preferred pyramidal preference and the delocalization of the negative charge wins if we talk about transition state stabilization. The last effect we will talk about is the modulation of strain in cyclic compounds. Since cyclopropanes are sensitive to rehybridization effects because of their unusual hybridization, we can easily change their reactivity as we increase the S character of the carbon carbon bonds by substitution of hydrogens by a more electronegative substituent. Here, I'm showing the cyclopropene substituent cyclopropene substituent uh, substituted by a fluorine. 
and as the bond bending increases, um, the string energy difference also increases, and this fact can help us to model and design cyclic compounds. That's it for today, and thanks for your attention. Please subscribe to my channel for more chemistry and computer science. Bye!